The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Talkin' Cowboys. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys training camp in Oxnard, California. First down. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. And now your hosts, Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. For one final time from Oxnard, California, this is Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company as we come to you live from the tennis courts outside the practice fields in one final week of action in Cowboys Camp 2022. Back alongside Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips, we've got Chris Beam running the ship, William Boykins doing a great job as always getting the stream up and running. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Now, gentlemen, we are coming off of preseason game number one. Thank mm. goodness. It's in the books. Are you happy it's over? It's behind us. <laughs> got it. Got it done. Went up to the mile high. Had a joint practice with the Broncos that was arguably dominated by the Broncos. And then they played a game in mile high that was all also dominated by the Broncos. No arguably about that one. But 17-7, to the final score. The Broncos take down the Cowboys in the first preseason game. And we're going to go through the offense. We're going to go through the defense. But I want to start off with, with some general thoughts, Rob, and, and kind of your takeaways from the game. It, it's overreaction time for Cowboys Nation. It kind of seems that way, and deservedly so. I mean, 17 penalties for 160 yards. I mean, it, it wasn't pretty. 129. Don't make it oh, worse sorry. than it was. You're right. I, I was talking about overreaction. <laughs> but it, it wasn't pretty. Oh. But what were your takeaways? Well, Mickey, Mickey's glad it's behind us. I'm glad it's behind us too. But just get ready because Saturday is going to be probably the same more thing, of the same. Right? At least, at least the the the, the look. You know, the, the, this the way Mike McCarthy seems to be treating this training camp is these joint practices are going to function essentially for a lot of the starters mm -hmm. as preseason. You know, because he wants to give the young guys at least in this last game, and maybe we'll see the same thing most likely against the Chargers. The young guys are going to get the opportunities in the preseason games and it was very on brand for preseason in fact i felt like you know somebody said it in the press box mick like that that game felt like what a preseason finale usually is you know where you don't really see any starters any regular rotation players and it's a guys fighting for jobs or or draft picks getting their first look and and trying to stand out and, and adjust to nfl competition you mentioned the penalties it was sloppy um it, it wasn't. Uh, it was not a clean game by any means. I think the biggest thing that they can take away from a positive is that some young guys, especially their draft picks, stood out. Some guys made some good plays. They did move the ball late, but yeah, overall, not the prettiest game you'll ever see in your life. Well, here's the bottom line: their backups were better than my backups. They, no starters hardly played, mm -hmm. so this was not the Dallas Cowboys, right? There are guys out there taking snaps that didn't, never took a snap in the NFL last year, and they were playing important places. Uh, so I think you got to just take this whole thing with a grain of salt and say this was a necessary evil to develop a 53-man roster. you got to play these young guys. you got to see where they're at. you got to see where the depth is. There wasn't a starter out there that committed any of those, those penalties, right? Arguably. None. No, not arguably. Tyler Smith. Okay, could be your Tyler Smith week one. could start, right? And one of them Probably was a BS call. Okay, he pancaked the guy. Are we getting right into the penalties yes, now? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I just wanted to say one more thing because I went back and looked at them, and 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 okay. in that first quarter, the interference they called on Nashawn Wright. Are you kidding me? The guy made a play on the ball, diving for it. They called him for touching his shoulder. What were you going to say? Rob? Nishan, and, and the Keep Tyler going. Smith one, <laughs> when the guy was trying to run away from him, he had his hands on him, and he pushed him to the ground. That's legal, right? But those guys didn't have a good game. <laughs> I, would like no, to see, no, like, I would like to see what their grade is. We, people, we said it during the game. It's preseason for the refs, yes, too. Yes. No doubt. Uh, one thing I was going to add, Kyle, about, about these preseason games, remember that not only is it a bunch of young guys playing, and getting adjusted to the NFL competition against a new team. They finally played against a different team on Thursday in the joint practice. It's seven padded practices they've had since we've been out here. Seven. Mm -hmm. So it's not a lot of time to get ready to play a football game, and it's not a lot of time to get ready to play a regular season game, and that's just life in the NFL right now. So you can expect 
in a first preseason opener with young players, there's going to be mistakes. That's just normal. But you're right. Broncos, and this has kind of been on brand for the Cowboys in recent preseasons without their starters, had trouble moving the ball. And they haven't won a road game in I don't know how long in the preseason. So, you know, the, the, the Broncos. Ten years. Ten years. The Broncos' backups were better. That's right. And, and you know, they, they moved the football. They made big plays in the passing game, right? Denver. Denver. Yeah. Do you think they're happy with the fact that the Cowboys ran for 141 yards on them? Probably no. not. And they're probably not happy that they ran for 39 yards. Uh, so, you know, but they were able to make big plays. If, if you look at it, uh, what they did offensively, uh, they had completions of 42, 40, 24, 19, 17, and 13, which does not bode well for the Cowboys' depth at uh, the cornerback position. But look at the number of plays Kelvin Joseph played and Deshaun Wright played, right? Those guys, I'll guarantee you that's the most plays that they've played in a, re- in a semi-real game since they were in college. Yeah, yeah, right? I'd I'd agree with that. I'd have to go back to Philly late in the regular maybe, season. Because they pulled all Because the they pulled a bunch of guys right. in Week 18. But other but, than but that, that's yeah. It. Even yeah. that, there was a lot of rotation in that game because they didn't want to – they didn't want to – strain anybody. Right, because they didn't want to have to play the next week. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So the, I think even this would probably bode well for, for that stats. Totally. I mean, when do you think the last time Josh Ball played that many snaps? Meaningful snaps? It was probably in Conference USA against... 2020, right? Yeah, in Western Kentucky. Yeah. We can. I'm, I'm torn on Josh Ball. We, well, we can I get think into we. Josh I think Ball. we all are, and we'll get yeah. into it. I'm yeah. just saying, though, that's the first time he's played in a game since the last game at Marshall, right? And it, predictably, you know, it wasn't good. But we've seen, you know, varied levels of play of him so far, and it doesn't make you feel good about the backup uh, tackle position. But even as much as we're talking about it, it, it is preseason, it doesn't matter a whole lot. And, and yes, it's, it's not a true look of how the Dallas Cowboys will look in 2022. But you mentioned it earlier. You said the Denver backups were better than the Dallas backups. Yeah. That's still something – uh, that says something. But because think about, we, we went into this game thinking that the depth of this Cowboys team was deeper than it had been but in a good amount of time. But you're not going to play all those guys together at the same time, mm-hmm. right? If, if, if Calvin Joseph has to come in, chances are Jordan Lewis and Anthony Brown or Diggs is on the other side, right? Yeah. You're not going to have them playing all together. If somebody has to come in and play on the offensive line, the other four guys you hope aren't out, right? Mm -hmm. You just kind of slide Connor McGovern in. And I had to be careful that because I saw somebody write Connor McGregor uh, this morning. Oh. Oh, yeah. And I said, oh, okay, that was good. Yeah. (laughs) What a signing. Uh, But but those guys aren't going to play all together. You're going to say, okay, this guy's got to come in for 20 snaps. But Zach Martin's not going to be out. You hope, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the rest of your offensive line is not going to be out. Now, did did Terrence Steele struggle at times? Yeah, I thought so. He could have played better. Um, they had a couple problems with combo blocks up front mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, Beatish turned right, Tyler Smith turned left, and no one took the guy coming right between them. On the sack. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so there were there were things like that, yeah. and and again in Cooper Rush, you know I think that I mean where there was times he had time to throw the ball and he just missed guys or missed the guy that was open. Now a lot of times he was under duress, um, and and you know the protection could have been better, but again, uh, you know Will Greer might have you know gained ground on the competition by not playing he might have he might have and we'll, we'll talk and i know we're all that. over the you place. Are, yeah, yeah. So so i'm just trying to put the whole thing in perspective that the cowboys had basically 22 either starters or would-be starters that or were guys that are going to play a lot we but they didn't was, play we have to talk about something we yeah. have an hour no, no, I'm just saying, we can't just say oh it's just preseason no, we'll see you guys what, when we get back but we have to we have to give it perspective you're right? No, you're right. You're right. And, you you're know, everybody wants to jump out the window. Oh, 17 penalties. Well, who made the 17 penalties? Well, let's put it this way then. Okay. If we're going to talk about it like that, I mean, even with the second team, third team, fourth team guys that were in and the rotation. And probably four guys that are getting cut today. but Probably. But go ahead. Let's throw that out there. Or tomorrow. It was still, but, but it's today. still the okay. same. It's the same red flags that were there a year ago. It was but those penalties. guys weren't making Listen, the penalties <laughs> last year. 
Oh my gosh! Listen, Mick. <laughs> calm down. Oh, we got a laugh from Will all the way down Goodness the tennis court. Gracious! So we're the only ones here. Penalties, big plays, and uh, uh, offensive line play, and three of your five starters were on the offensive line too. For how long? Uh, at least a quarter. M- a quarter. Much of the first half. Okay, right. Much I got, of the first I got half. you. And 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 they struggled throughout that entire first half in terms of protecting for Cooper Rush. They he did had zero time. Absolutely. To throw. And, and and three of your five starters were out there. But they weren't. But your two All Pro guys weren't out there, right? I agree. Okay. Nor well, should they have. Does been. that make a difference? It does, but it also bodes poorly for the guys that were out there. And how many snaps did the guys that were out there play last year in the NFL? Because one of them didn't play any. I mean, two of them played the majority of the snaps. Right. Tyler Biotish and Terrence Steele. Yeah, both and of them Terrence Steele was considered a backup. Right now, he's a starter. That's the mm-hmm. that's the decision they he, made. He right? started most of yeah, the games I know, at right tackle because, last year because of circumstances, though, not because he earned it. Circumstances, uh, but then he held on to the job for a little bit. He definitely earned and it. Then in the he well, Lel Collins was out, right? Yeah, yeah I think he, he played. I think he played better than Lyle Collins. I, I, yeah, last I year. think that's where I'm going. If, if he, they felt like he outplayed Lyle right. Collins, that's why I Lyle agree. Collins is not here. I agree. So you're expecting, but the left a tackle jump. didn't play a snap. No, and the right tackle didn't, and I, yeah, a right guard didn't. I, I get it, but you know it. it I think it if wasn't, there's it, a worry, wasn't, it wasn't as clean. I think as it if could there's be. a worry, it's the depth you're worried about. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. You're not worried about Zach Martin because But Connor we're acting McGovern like, oh, my call. God, this team's just awful. No, but whenever 31 other teams were penalized far less than you were in the first week of the preseason, a direct year after you were the most penalized team in the NFL, it, it, it does bring up questions. But I bet some of these guys that got penalized questions. never got penalized last year. I don't want to get yelled at by you today about this, <laughs> but but I, I will say, I, I, I'll take issue with it because I, I think – I think two things can be true. You're right. I mean, it, it, it's a lot of young guys playing, and that, I think that was Mike McCarthy's message. He well, he didn't say it, but sure. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that are going to not make this team, be on the practice squad, some of whom committed penalties in the game. And and yes, we said it in the press box. There were certain calls where you're like, really a hold? Yep. Really a, a the roughing, roughing the passer, the passer. With Sam Williams was rough. You know, so and that was the case last year too. So I mean, we we can point to certain games last year where you're like, "What is going on here? That's not a that's not a good penalty." But there was still an overarching issue with penalties by the Dallas Cowboys last year, the most in the NFL, and that wasn't all the referees' fault. No, but and hang on, I'm not I'm not I'm not <laughs> but, but but I'm not saying that that it is a direct correlation to last season. No, different players, as Mike McCarthy said, different year. But there were instances that. You know, Dante Fowler, who's not a young player. And he wasn't there last year. Okay, but he's not a young player, and he gets a, a personal foul call. That's the kind of stuff that cost them in key games last year. And, you know, if it's something that you – you know, Mike stood up here the, up on the podium the day after the San Francisco loss and said this is going to be our number one emphasis in the offseason. Well, no matter who's out there, when you have 17 penalties, and our man Dave Hellman said the average so far in the young preseason is about six and a half – that is alarming a little bit, you know, and, and I'm not saying it's necessarily going to carry over to week one because all the guys that are going to play weren't in this game. But I think it's something to watch and over the first month of the regular season, if, okay. they, can, if they can curtail some of this stuff. If you, if you, if you take away pre-snap penalties, right, mm-hmm. you take away the, the roughing things, right, why, why do guys end up getting called for pass interference, holding – on defense or holding on offense most of the time because they get beat exactly however and, and i'll say you know tyler smith going back to college going back to saturday night it, it kind of reminded me of what people said about him at tulsa right like he's beating his guy it's not he's getting beat it's a technique issue or something and and one of the holding calls i didn't think was was legit so then he had one holding call right uh, no i thought tyler smith played very well Overall, he, I he, thought he missed that one block he up did. the middle. He did, and he had a one hold. Other but, than that, he he. I thought he did pretty good. And I thought he did pretty good in the in the practice game. Yeah, but when guys are getting beat, that's when they hold, right? And well, so that's also a technique issue at times. Well, no, as well. if I'm if I'm playing defense and and, and the guys beat me and I grab them, I got beat. Happened in, with Connor in, Williams interf- some last year for interference, sure. Interference, same thing. I'm interfering because I'm not in position to play the ball because I'm getting beat. 
I mean, that's why you hold. But they had some pre-snap, which the, is the, which was which was ones. the thing Mike has been saying more right. than anything. I'm with you. The pre-snap stuff, and there was some false starts. I think Jalen Tolbert had a false start. So Kelvin Joseph had offsides on the so was field it, goal. Attempt. So was the offside? Did he line up offsides because he didn't move? If you I go back say, and I look at, I want to say it. he lost. Are you talking about Sam Williams? No, it, the offsides on the on, on the, the field, field goal? goal. Yeah, he didn't. He was he lined up offsides. He Sam lined Williams up offsides. had an offsides as well, where he lined up off, offsides as well. So I mean, it happens. I mean, penalties happen, but 17 in one game, right after being the most penalized team in the NFL, was a little bit concerning. Yeah, I can understand it, how you you could you take it with a grain of salt, like Mickey said. I agree with uh, some of what Mick said throughout the segment because you can't you can't throw up your arms and say, "Oh, here we go again." Well, it's a preseason. Let's be honest; it's it's an easy storyline for us in the media. It is because in a game like that where there's not a whole lot, you know, a whole lot to write home about, that's an easy one that stands out. And I do think it has over the last. You know, two days probably jumped the shark a little bit. Like, yeah. I don't think it's as big a deal as, as, as it was maybe in the moment. But, but it yeah. is a deal. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not saying that, you know, they don't, they're don't they not trying to curtail that, the coaching staff, w- with their teaching methods. But it is something they've got to continue to hone in on, whether it's a vet, whether it's a young guy, and, and carry over into the regular season. You think Alex Kemp's crew came in with a predisposed opinion of the Cowboys <laughs> making penalties? Well, Mick, I'll tell you what, <laughs> that's not a bad point. Because honestly, one of the biggest reasons why Connor, what's up? <laughs> he was the, they were at the scrimmage. They were at the scrimmage. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, one of the biggest reasons why I think they made the they switch. They were at the San Francisco game too, by the way. Why I think they made the switch from Connor Williams to Connor McGovern halfway through the season was the book on Connor Williams was he was going to hold. hold. He was gonna, and, and yes, refs are human and they can think, they can spot tendencies and maybe have a quicker whistle. So, yeah, I think there might be something to that. Might be. All right. No more penalty talk. We're done. Because these are done. It's, it's I want to see, I see, I, I see those guys grade. <laughs> the, the, the referee's grade. The I, know like Mike, I know what Mike McCarthy's grade was. Mick went on a 34-mile bike ride today, so his legs are a little it, bit it off. I'm just going to shove four, him over if he talks about penalties again. It was only 14. I'm just going to push him to the, the side. Of, it kind of looks like your Ed Hockley hat on today. Yeah. Did you wear that just for because you're in ref mode? No, I left it at home. Okay. should have had the you. NFL hat, the NFL, yeah. the Shield logo. All right, when we come back, let's talk about the offense. What did we see from the offense? Positive, negative. Negative, no penalties talking on the other side of the break. <laughs> talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Lil Sweet! Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Lil Sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper's on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. What was it? They go, you go. <laughs> and if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Not available in every state, based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here with more Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. Be sure to come out to Cowboys practice during training camp at the Star, presented by American Airlines. Open practices will take place for back-to-back nights at Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. 
Join us for Cowboys Night on Tuesday, August 23rd, starting at 4 p.m. and open practice on Wednesday, August 24th at 6 p.m. For more info, more info, visit the Star in Frisco. Dot com. Boom. So going right back to it, we're in Oxnard today. We leave tomorrow for Irvine. Mm. Mike McCarthy will talk tonight, by the way, at 5 o'clock. We'll leave tomorrow. We'll hop on the train, headed to Irvine. And then from there, we will go to two joint practices with the Los Angeles Chargers. You'll play on Saturday, Cowboys at SoFi Stadium against the Chargers. Then it's back home to Dallas. It feels like training camp is wrapping up here in Oxnard because for a good portion of it it is but if at you the look same at the time, tennis courts it's wrapping up it's they're definitely already wrapping starting it up. to tear it, down it feels like we were supposed to go home yeah or go After somewhere else game. and and we're we've overstayed our welcome or something like it's just <laughs> weird that we're here and there's nothing going well, they're on still here. protecting it because they're locking the gates they the are yep. court. they are and we are going to hear from <clears throat> coach mccarthy later what this was afternoon. that mick <clears throat> they're, they're locking the, the tennis gates. courts yes locking the gates I got locked in here last night for all those wondering. Oh yes, you did. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was on the phone. Was I asleep with did my you call fiance? Me? No, no, it was no, early. No, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it was like nine o'clock. I was on the phone with my fiance, Lorena, and I was just sitting on one of the couches out here, just kind of hanging out. It's beautiful weather. I like being outside, and I I turn around to my uh, and I look at my phone. My phone's about to die. I'm headed back to the room, which is not too far from where we are right here, and I'm going back to the gate, and every single gate. From here all the way down to the to the locker room and all the way back has been chained shut, locked shut. And, and these I'm fences just, are like 10, 12 feet high. They're not all like, like this. Like this. Yeah. Over there, us. it's like six, maybe seven. Yeah, yeah it's still, still a decently high fence. When I saw him, I said, just scale it. Let's You're, go. Yeah, he's an athletic young guy. I, I probably could have. could have. I just don't want to because I don't want to get yelled at by security is ultimately the, the problem here. But <laughs> they, they might have they made it come in and say, whoa, wait, we got to get whoa, this whoa, guy. Whoa. He's coming over the We've wall. We've got a breach in sector six. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, so I, I didn't really want to test that, so I, I made one phone call with my 2% battery, and we got it done. And then Mick showed up and, and provided for some comic, comic relief in the middle of it. Well, so. I found I found the security guy that sits <laughs> out there all night and does nothing, right? And I said, you got a phone or something you can call? <laughs> my guy is we got, a, we got a guy who's about to sleep on the court. <laughs> yeah. the, well, there's couches in there still. There oh. are couches in there. Yeah, it would have been fine. That's where I, I FaceTimed a little. Might have been little a little bit chilly, but that's okay. We'll, we'll make it work. All right, let's talk about the offense here for the Cowboys yesterday. I mean, no Will Greer, of course, no Dak Prescott. We got to see Cooper Rush and Ben DiNucci go at it for a little bit, both of which had their ups, had their downs. But, Rob, did we really get an accurate look at how – the skills positions worked because the offensive line outside of the run game, by the way, really struggled in terms of pass protection. It looked like quarterbacks didn't have a ton of time to throw. Yeah, it wasn't always clean for Cooper Rush, though. I, I, there were some throws he just missed. Uh, you know, there were some guys open. I th you know, I thought Jalen Tolbert, and we can talk more about him a little bit later if you want. I, I thought he played better than maybe he's getting credit for. You know, I thought he was. I thought he was creating some separation at times, mm -hmm. and that's why Cooper Rush was going to him. That's why he was targeted seven times, and they just didn't connect. So yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't Rush's best game. Um, I, I thought Danucci kind of sparked him a little bit late. Best I saw him play. You know, and he he's not. Did he get picked off? He got picked off, right? Yeah, but it he, was when it, it was fourth down, and he just flung it flung up. It yeah. way down. He's not afraid to sling it. Was he, it he, fourth, or was it? Uh, I think there it was, was a field goal range. Uh, I don't remember. Well, I got the fourth down play by play because it's the only thing. It's the, the only fourth quarter, yeah. fourth quarter, yeah. quarter play yeah. by play. Mm, I guess we can. We yeah, can look at it. It, it. They were third and fifteen at the thirty-eight, and he just slung it down field and I was thinking well that's kind of like a punt yeah and then they tried the 56 yard field goal and the snap was low it, it was wet it was dropped and then they picked it up and he just went wide on it yeah so he's you know he's firmly I think in the fourth spot but you know he he sparked him a little bit with that early throw from his own end zone yep and got him on a touchdown drive more more good things from Simi Fajoko I thought I thought Cooper Rush, you know, one one of maybe his best attribute is he he always not always usually makes the right decisions, and he didn't always make the right decision. He almost got a pick six on him uh, at one point in the first half. So no, not his best effort. I do think still the Cowboys overall feel like he can go in there with all of the starters and and move the football though. 
And whether he'll win the number two job, I'm not sure. I think Will Greer probably has been probably at the edge so far in Oxnard when he's been healthy, but but I don't think they, they're worried about Rush overall. Are we going to see Will Greer in L.A.? Do you know what the timetable so is on that? So we've got how many days till Thursday? Three, three more days to see if the groin uh, heals enough for him to play. I, 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 those things sometimes are like two weeks. I, I don't know. I don't. They're think tricky. Know They're soft tissue. So, um, yeah. and it'd be nice, but you know, not playing, he might have gained ground. I don't know. Um, and, and and like you said, you know, Rush di- was under pressure, uh, but that first possession, uh, he throws the ball to a covered Tolbert. And underneath, Simi Fihoko was wide open, and if he hit him on the run, they would have gotten the first down. Yeah. So it was it was a bad read, and he had a couple questionable reads. The interception was questionable because the guy was never open, uh, and and usually that's his strong point, right? He he sees the field. Now I know he was rushed a little bit, uh, you know, miss blocks and things like that. Uh, I'll tell you who miss blocks. And I thought he was always on the border making this team again with Sprinkle. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes the tight the tight end should play. I mean, they ran a lot of two tight end, right? Yeah. And, and they had trouble running the ball early. Uh, and and he was the one. He he missed the block like the first play of the game. And, and then he got a holding call later uh, in the first quarter trying to protect the quarterback, and he'd gotten beat, so he grabbed the guy. Uh, you know that that guy's got to be careful because you got to figure McEwen's your second tight end and Ferguson might second or third right between yeah. the top three and you know will they keep four tight ends? They really like Peyton Hendershot. I don't know if he's going to make the team, but I know they like him and they like him for his ability. It's not so much the blocking; he's kind of the lighter tight end. It's ability yeah. to get down the field, and he almost made a play down the field. And I think it was the second half. Well, he actually, I mean, in the middle of the second half, the the rain was falling. Nobody really had any kind yeah. of success, but Hendershot was, was able it, to. He was had it two wet grabs. Out there? Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> wet. Yep, no doubt. I was out on the sideline. <laughs> they gave me an umbrella. Oh, I they did. Not, I okay. chose not to use it because I didn't. I just didn't want to stand there with one, but. Uh, they offered it to me. I, I I ended up saying no. But Hendershot, I mean, he what what was his numbers finally? Two receptions, four targets, thirteen yards. One of those was a big reception that I think got called back. For That's what the one I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I think overall he played just as well as Jake Ferguson did. And Jake Ferguson was your leading receiver in that. Ball I mean, game. if you don't keep a tight end, maybe you, I mean a fullback. I mean, I don't know when Null's going to get Ryan back, gets right? Back. He's been out for two weeks. Maybe you keep an extra tight end. And I'll, and I'll, uh, so from what I hear, uh, Ian Bunning is probably out four to six. Hmm. So Neck injury? When they, an IR yeah, and it, and it could be an IR or they release him injured and then he reverts back to uh, their injured reserve list. Mm-hmm. So, and, and if they think he's out that long, he may be one of the guys. I think they got to cut four today. Is that right? Five, what, five yeah. by tomorrow, but it sounded like they were going to do it today. Yeah, it probably because you're not going to take them. Put them on the train. Let's go to yeah. Let's go to Irvine, and then oh, yeah. by so, the way, we're taking you back to LA. Right. Sounds right. like a bad Western movie. Just get off the train, <laughs> right? You're done. <laughs> Sorry, but you're but you're right uh, on the on on Hendershot, and he he's played well in these yeah. practices he out has here. Caught their eye going so back they got to OTAs. figure out what to do because if they really like him but don't think they get him on the 53, they need to shut him down in the games. Rob, and five, try to hide them so they can get them on the practice squad. Five yards per carry mm-hmm. from that offensive line and a, a couple of running backs. I mean, Malik Davis ran well. Aaron Champlin ran well. Even Rico Dowdle at times. It looked like Dowdle was trying to make the big play and, yeah. and, and just didn't come up with it a couple different times. What did you think about establishing the run? Because that was a question mark at the end of last year, one of those red flags that we talked about at, in the final couple regular season games and then into the playoff game. They ran the ball efficiently yesterday, and they did it consistently against a good Denver front seven. Yeah, they did, and you know what? They they didn't they didn't establish it very well. I thought consistently, at least in the Thursday joint practice, You're right? right. They, but they did a better job up front in the game. Mix mix right. They got started a little slow in the game, but um, that is an emphasis. And Mike McCarthy spoke about it afterwards. And I, Malik Davis 
you know, I think Rico Dattles probably got the edge as the third running back. He was the first guy out He's there. He's got his hand up in the air, though, right? Well, yeah, I mean. Hey, I'm here. Yeah. I mean, Malik Davis has, has shown up out here as a young running back. He's just, you watch him in that game, he's just efficient. There's no wasted motion. He's, he's He figures out where he wants to go with it. He's he's pretty versatile. I, know, I think he might have had a drop. But he, but he, but he know. had like three catches, I think. Yeah, he's efficient out he of the did. backfield as Four a receiver targets. as well. Three for sixteen. You know, he's just an interesting young player because he didn't play. You know, he didn't have huge stats at Florida. No, he he was he was in a big rotation. They had a bunch of backs that they used at Florida. He wasn't used as a receiver either because Damian Pierce was the other running back at Florida. Davis was technically the starter. He got starter reps, but he was not the leading rusher on his team, and he was not the leading receiver out of the out of the backfield. So. He was never really utilized as a receiver, but they're trying to transition in, into that kind of role, and he did a nice job of it. No, you get him in the open field, he he made people miss. Or no he, doubt. At least he found creases. He, his vision, I thought, was yeah. uh, was really good. So, yeah, the fact that they were able to run the ball, I mean, Mike said it during the press conference, right? He said our two main goals was to run the ball and stop the run, and those two things did take place. Now, you know, let's protect the quarterback and – try to make some plays down the field because that's what that was the difference in the game. Denver got the ball down the field in the passing game. Yeah. You know, they only ran for what 1.8 yards a carry. That's it. Yeah. 1.8. 50 yeah. yards or something like that. They had seven guys had carries and only four of them had positive yardage and one of them was th- all of 3 yards. So uh, yeah, they did a nice job against the run. And and, and you saw early, right, Gallimore. Yep, he's first a, play. He's a starter, right, and all of a sudden he showed up. Well, he should be showing up. He's playing against backups, right? That's, you know, that's a difference. I think Denver only played one starter uh, on either side of the ball. It was just yeah. one. Uh, but, yeah, he should take advantage, and he did. He showed that he's played in the National Football League. I agree with you. Let's talk about that defense when we come back on the other side of the break because there were some positives from the defense as well. I thought the front seven looked good outside of a couple penalties. I thought the the secondary was okay, but I really want to talk about the depth at the cornerback spot when we return with more Talking Cowboys right after this. Feel sweet. Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper is on its way. So sweet. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. The Cowboys Way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. (laughs) But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G, fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here with more Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. Are you a Cowboys fan who spices up the game? Nominate yourself or a friend to be the Cowboys fan of the year presented by Captain Morgan and win a trip to Super Bowl 57 in Arizona Nominate today at DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. Back here with Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips, I'm Kyle Yeomans, Chris Beam, William Boykins running the ship, getting us 
all finished up, tying a big bow on Oxnard, California, here on the podcast side of things. And then, of course, we've got plenty more to come for training camp back in Irvine, back in Frisco, and we continue forward toward week one of the 2022 season. I was looking at Twitter just now in the break, and I was like, why is Zach Martin trending on Twitter right now? Oh, God, what what happened? I'm sure he didn't say anything crazy. Top when, 100 awards? Top 100 awards. Mm, I knew it wasn't was anything he? nuts. He's, think, not a, he's not a big uh, I think he was like 64th He was 68. 68. 68. 68. Yep. He was 68. Tyron Smith was 92, I believe. And then C.D. Lamb was 95. Those were the three so far. So do they rank those just solely on last year's performance? Uh, yeah, I believe it's voted on by the players. But it's voted on by the players and then players and coaches, peers, whatever. And then do you it's think players thrown know? into there. Mm, other than the maybe. guys they play against? Um, maybe. Uh, I, I don't know if it's with everything they have because they vote during the season, right? I think. I'm not sure when they do Toward it. the end of the year. And yeah, I don't toward know the end how, of many, the year. Yep. how many actually vote either. Yeah. I, I, guys have a lot going on. I don't know if it's the most exhaustive research being done, you mm -hmm. know, but uh, it is what it is. It's a fun I list. I think back when yeah. they used to make Pro Bowl votes, they would, uh, the PR guy would do it for them. Oh, gosh. Yep. They, they, and there the might PR be, guy might know more than they do. There might be more some of that. There might be some of that going on. I mean, some notables that are, haven't been on the list yet, but Dak Prescott, Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, um, I mean, Ezekiel Elliott. There's probably a chance that D-Law and Zeke probably don't make that list, but you got those other three guys, Dak, Micah, Trayvon, that could very well be in the top 50, and I believe the top 50 will be released here over the next couple of days. But let's talk about that defensive side of the football Stopping the run, Mick, was, was a huge, huge plus in that ball game. You mentioned it a little bit earlier, but it set the tone early. Neville Gallimore was able to control the line of scrimmage, get to the right-hand side, and then he stuffed the run. And Got right back in there, and then they did it the next play. Right. And, and I thought Bohanna, playing more th than he had played, I, I thought he showed up in the middle too. He, yeah. He kind of clogged things up. You know, they rotated so much at the defensive end spot. Uh, you know, it was, it was hard to tell. Uh, but, you know, this was the first time, you know, in whatever, they had six padded practices here and then right before mm -hmm. we left. I didn't see 56 much. And then all of a sudden in the game, I was like, oh, Dante Fowler, he is on there this team. There he is, team. yeah. And, you know, okay, he had the, the, the bad penalty. Uh, but he, second man in, it always happens, right? Somebody was tugging on one of his guys, and he tried to grab him off, and they saw him grabbing him off. Uh, but it was more of a show. He made, yeah, it wasn't even <laughs> like we do that when we see somebody we like. I, I did think, that to you, you know? in the. I did that to you in the break a minute yeah, ago. Yeah, so it's just like, come on. Uh, but he actually showed up. So he, you know, we got to see what happens at that defensive end spot. But yeah, I thought they and, and all those backup linebackers were playing right. And, yep. Uh, yeah, I thought Devin Harper made some plays. Devin Harper Rookie made some plays. Uh, Story Jackson. Marquise Story Bell thought he had a touchdown when they yep. rolled that one play yep. uh, mm -hmm. incomplete. And he made a couple plays, stuck his head in there. So, yeah, I thought those guys, uh, Ridgeway got in there and played. And uh, I, 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 Tristan Hill. So, I still think that's going to be the position they have trouble cutting down to 53. Mm. Yeah, speaking of that, I thought Terrell Basham was around the football decent amount too and i'm not counting about i'm not talking just about the penalty he had you know he and, and when you think about that spot you know is he going to win a job again or is, is somebody going to take his his spot you know because you're right like it's it's not a reflection on him i just think it's a very deep group of guys who belong in the nfl yep so they got to figure that out and and a lot of times when they look at that they're looking at a guy that's kind of on the rise right yeah and they're looking at basham who they know what he is now can that guy overtake basham yeah, uh, and that might be a difficult decision for him. But again, a veteran guy that's played in the league, right, against a bunch of backups. See, and that's a a very interesting conversation because it's two veterans that I think could be on the chopping block by the time the regular season comes around. Basham is one who he's in the second year of a two-year, five and a half million dollar deal. Had a career high in tackles last year. Actually played pretty well in the limited amount of time that he played in the games last year. He was a little banged up at the start of the season. But then there's Dante Fowler Jr who Mickey said barely stuck out in camp so far, got to, got in the game, had a big-time penalty on the goal line, and then he's a one-year $3 million deal, but and he's, he's still a guy that 
you don't know exactly and, what and he's, he's going to bring. He's got an advocate, by the way. That's what I was going to go. has that, somebody that's, in his corner. That's You're where right. I was going to go. Like, that would be surprising, wouldn't it? That, yeah. that he's a Dan Quinn guy, and they bring him in, and, and he doesn't make it out of training camp. I, I, they, brought in, they brought in two Dan Quinn guys last year, though. And, and they played a lot. They played. <laughs> but I'm saying they're, they're not around anymore. No, you're right. You're it's right. It's not I unheard just, of. No, it's not. I just think they, they had plans for him signing him. I agree. That, that he's he's going to be part of this mix, not necessarily as a starter. We've seen Dorrance Armstrong in that role. But, yeah. but uh, I mean, can you, yeah, keep, we'll see. you keep five defensive ends? I, I suppose you can do that. Yeah, you could. Uh, but then where are you going to be? You got Lawrence, elsewhere? Basham, Williams, three. Dorrance, Fowler. Oh, no, that's six. Yeah. And if you're counting Golston, now mm-hmm. they're counting him inside, inside, I guess. They got him listed as defensive But that end. makes it tough inside, too. But then too. it makes it inside tough. You know, with Gallimore, Osa, Quinton, Bohanna, Ridgeway, Tristan Hill, and Carlos Watkins. I, it, it, and go Golston. I was just going to say real quickly before – I, I want to hear what you had to say. But I, I want to bring it up. Because I don't think it's necessarily out of the question. I don't. If I were to make a prediction, I think he's on the roster. I, just because, like you said, he's a veteran, somebody that has a high ceiling. They saw it in L.A. a couple years ago. Dan Quinn, he's a Dan Quinn guy. I think he'll be on the roster, but I don't think it's out of the question just based off of numbers. If you're cutting guys for a significant amount of time or coming out of practice or whatever without injuries, you're going to go toward the younger ascending player it's hard to argue that Dante Fowler is the younger ascending player as a 27-year-old who's bounced around the league. No, that's a great point, and and you're you're not alone there. I mean, I think Isaiah said that out here last week that maybe that that was his prediction that he wouldn't make the cut. Fowler wouldn't make yeah. the cut. I always sound I feel like I sound ghoulish when I say this every year, but injuries can still happen over the next couple weeks, couple exactly. preseason games, and sometimes, unfortunately, it sorts itself out that way. Don't forget that it's very likely. Quite possible that, that James Washington is on the 53 for a day, and then he yeah. starts the, the season on, on mm-hmm. short-term IR. So there's one spot. And we'll see if, you know, if Michael Gallup starts the season on the 53 or if he's on a reserve list for, on, on PUP for uh, a few weeks to start the season as well. So there may be some spots open for guys, and it makes that tough decision that we see on paper now maybe a little easier than we think. And, and with uh – with Basham, I want to say he's a vested veteran. So if you wanted to cut him and then re-sign him, you could you could do that. Say don't unless somebody's giving you a heck of a lot of money. Wait until yeah. the first well, week, right? And then once you put you know Washington on IR or Gallup on IR, depending on how they decide to do that, uh, you know you got to look for guys like that. Yeah. I mean, didn't they do it with McQuaid last year? Yeah, the deep they snapper. did do that. To create a spot so they can put somebody on return IR. They did it with Kellen Moore years ago. That's yep. right. Yep. Uh, before we wrap things up, I promised going into the break that we would talk about the cornerback position. And it looked like at times, Kelvin Joseph, Nashawn Wright, they really struggled. Uh, is the depth a question mark at corner, Rob, whenever you look at this roster? Because I thought going into it, we were saying secondary depth was fantastic. Now, I still keep that mindset with the with the sec, or with the safety position. I mm-hmm. thought the safeties played really well on Saturday. What did you think about the corners? Uh, I was not their best night. Um, to your point, I, I think Nashawn Wright has played very well out here. So I, you know, you you can write it off as a one off. Maybe they really like him, and and he's going to get some more opportunities out here. Kelvin Joseph. Did not play well. We'll see. We'll see. I, I I would say yeah. Given given the fact that they're they're young and what we saw Saturday, yeah, you could say it's a concern. Just because we talk about receiver, you need depth at receiver because you're basically starting three, yeah. and you need you need guys beyond that. Corners the same way. You've got your top three corners because you're playing so much nickel, and and you need guys who can step in and play. They were fortunate last year that I think Trayvon Diggs. Um, Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis each only missed one game last year. But if you go back two years, I think Diggs missed like six games. and Or maybe Anthony Brown missed six games. Dig, no, Diggs Anthony missed Brown four. Did, yeah. yeah, Diggs missed a handful of games too. So you're only a couple plays away from having to de- reach deep in the bag at the position. Okay, so those two guys fit into my category of how much have they played in the NFL. Not a lot. Right? So I went back and looked. Kelvin Joseph last year played 150 defensive snaps. No, he played 164 defensive snaps. 150 came in the last three games, and in the final game, he had 74 
uh, uh, of those 164 snaps. As for Nashawn Wright, he had 91 snaps last year. 74 came in the final game. So those two guys have not played a lot of football uh, since they've been drafted. Yeah. And, and so that's their first exposure. Was it good? No. It wasn't good at all. But, again, you, you got to kind of judge more what you've seen out here. And, by the way, what's your alternative mm-hmm. at this point? Mm-hmm. You, you think there's some corners out, out on the street? They're, oh, yeah, look at this guy. No. You know, there's there's t- 32 teams with 90 guys, and they're not on a team. Again, if you look and see some veteran guy gets cut and you get him on the cheap like they did Barr, then, oh, yeah, fine. But right now, th- those are probably your two best. Uh, al- although Kyron Brown has shown some stuff. I think, in, yeah, he was in the practices. Up, he's had a, yeah, he's had game, interceptions though. out here. Right, yeah. he's played yeah. well. Um, but Dur- other than that, Deron Bland has showed up. Goodwin, yeah. Goodwin is considered a special teams player, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, you got what you got, so you better get him out there and get him some experience. This goes back to what Jerry said to tie a bow on this whole Oxnard experience. Ooh. The first press conference we had up here he, he said you've got to project with guys you have to there is always projections when you're going to to say hey we're going to draft and develop that's what mccarthy always says we're a draft and develop team then you've got to just project and then find out about it and and you know to some extent that's and i mentioned josh ball earlier it's the same thing like he hasn't always had good moments right. out here the against bradley chubb was not easy in the in the thursday practice and mm-hmm. then go to the game but he's a young guy and they draft, they invested a draft pick in him, and he hasn't played a lot of football, so you just keep evaluating yeah, and hope he that had, he can he can progress and win the job. He had zero snaps last backup year. job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're we're, you know, if you're worried about backups, then you might be okay. Now, from a starting position on defense, I don't know that you're worried about anybody, right? And I mean, any one position. Um, from starters, probably not. No, I, I think if offense is a different story. If there's a yeah, if there's an injury at a cornerback, yeah, spot, but I've said Brown, starters, yeah. yeah, and Brown can play e- inside or out, sure. right? So you got that ability. Uh, now offense, yeah, okay, you're you're you know you made a decision on tackle and guard, right? Because yep. you didn't have to get rid of those guys, but you did yep. to move forward. So there's question marks there. And we still haven't seen a kicking duel between the two guys that are here now. No. Now they each they the idea of going in the game. Mike told us on the pregame show uh, was we're going to alternate kicks. So if you get the kickoff, the other guy gets the place kick. Well, they only had what two shots at a at a field goal. Yeah. And one extra point and only two kickoffs. So there both was, of yeah. them were touchbacks, by the way. Yes. Yeah. There was one play in the first half where I thought maybe they were just going to—he was going to settle for the long field goal. Yeah, and do just, it anyway. Yeah, just to test, but he yep. didn't do it. And they Mike. went for it on fourth down. It was yep. like well, fourth yeah. and three. They could have kicked they a long. Didn't one. get it. Either. Although when I was talking to Dak after the game, he said that win early w- was real. Mm. It was. Uh, and I don't know if that affected some of Rush's passes or decisions, but uh, by the time Danucci got in there. Mr. Sidearm, you know, he was firing away. I didn't know if he was the eighth inning relief pitcher, but hey, he came in and he scored a touchdown. Clint Eastwood, though. right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. But that's going to do it here for us in talking Cowboys. Rob very nicely, Mickey very nicely putting Rob a bow. put a bow on it, right? Yeah, his last I like it. We kind of went comment. circle went of life. Uh, we haven't decided just yet what's going to happen in Los Angeles. I believe we're going to try and do podcast, right, Beamer? Chris Beam, yes, maybe. It's a, okay, yeah, we're getting a solid That's sideways. A sideways it's um, um, it's, we're, it's, we're, it's we're a, thinking. Uh, if not, there's going to be plenty of coverage. DallasCowboys.com. We'll have some live stuff. We'll have some recorded stuff. And, of course, uh, you can catch all that on the website and on the YouTube as well. But do want to thank everybody for tuning in throughout the time out here in Oxnard from the tennis courts for one final time. For William Boykins, Chris Beam, Rob Phillips, Mickey Spagnola, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long from Oxnard. We'll see you next time on Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!